One often overlooked part of making meteorological data plots is the color table that you use. We have a lot of field specific and sort of specialized color tables to emphasize areas of maybe physical importance or their color tables that we're used to looking at, like the National Weather Service reflectivity and velocity color table. But those aren't included by default in any of the Python plotting libraries. We have them in MetPy and this week we're gonna show you how to use them. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hi, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer at Unidata. So we've talked before about how MetPy has three core components. It's got calculations, it's got plotting, and it's got reading of different data file formats. We're gonna keep talking a little bit more about plotting because it's one of those areas where we really are trying to be able to help you replace some of your legacy tools for making things like upper air maps, radar maps, and so on. But a lot of these require special color tables, or we're used to looking at special color tables. So this week, let's take a look at some of the color tables that are in MetPy. So on the MetPy documentation page, I'm gonna go over here to the MetPy API, and C tables. And here you get a display of all of the color tables that we have built into MetPy that are available to you. So there are some in here that you'll recognize like the National Weather Service reflectivity or expanded, spectrum width, velocity, clear air reflectivity, and so on. We also have some satellite color tables. So infrared, tropical, uh, there's the normal rainbow satellite color table. And then we have also the Viridis, which is in Matplotlib, but it's easy to get to. So there are several of these that you can get at. We also have some tools that let you read Gympack color tables, but that's gonna be another topic for another MetPy Monday. What I wanna do this week is let's create some fake data and take a look at it using different color tables. So I've popped over here into a Jupyter notebook and I'm going to use NumPy to create some fake data. Of course, we're gonna use matplotlib for our plotting. And then we're going to use the color tables registry C tables from metpy.plots. So let's go ahead and import those things. Okay, so we've got our imports done. You see we use the matplotlib inline magic, so the figures will show up in our notebook. We don't have them coming up in separate windows. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a set of two-dimensional data, so an X and Y mesh grid, and then we're going to make some Z values for that. Okay, so what this has done is created a grid from minus five to five with a spacing of 0.05 and dumped those grids to variables X and Y. So if we look at X, we see we have a 200 by 200 grid that goes from minus five to in this case, 4.95, so one step less than our maximum there. Now we'll go ahead and make some data for Z. Okay, so we've got some Z data. What this is going to give us is a wavy sign looking uh, circular pattern that goes up, so increasing towards the edges of the grid. So we can actually make a, a quick 2D plot. We're gonna slice uh, right through the center of this, so elements 100 of X and look at Z. I'm just going to use the plot.plot .plot command. We're going to get all rows and the 100th column of X and Z. And you can see we're starting at zero and going up towards the outer bounds. If we look at what the maximum of Z is, we see we get pretty close to 40 towards the, the corners of our grid here. So let's go ahead and make a simple figure with the defaults from matplotlib. So I'm gonna make a figure. And an axis object here. 
And I'm going to use the I am show command. And we see we get pretty much what we expected. Low values in the center, increasing towards the edge with this sign-like variation on them. But that's probably not the color map that we would want to use for everything. For example, if you're plotting radar data, the default color map, which is Virtus, probably not going to be your first choice. So we can do this with a different color map. One essential thing to understand is that color maps have to be mapped onto some range of data. So internally, let's say the color map is stored from zero to one, but your data goes from minus 38 to plus 158. So you have to change the mapping of that with something that's called a, a norm in matplotlib terminology. So in MetPy, we've built in some functions to help you easily be able to get color maps and norms based on what you know about your data. So there are several that I want to go over real quick. One is get with range. This is the one that we're going to use today. It's the one that I end up using most commonly because it's pretty easy for me to find out what the range of my data are. So get with range takes the lower and upper bound of your data and then it linearly distributes your color map between those. We also have get with steps in which you provide a starting value. So the lowest point in your data and then a step increment. So each color is going to be that step increment above the starting value. And we also have the get with boundaries. In boundaries, you provide a list of boundaries. So you can make the color map anything you want. It can be very nonlinear. Uh, it could be very specialized. It could emphasize certain values, but you have to pass the bounds for each color. So what you end up passing is a list of bounds that is one element longer than the number of colors in the color map. So those are the three main ways that you can get color maps. What I'm gonna do is copy our cell up here and we'll paste it down here. And we're going to do a little bit of addition here. So I'm going to store the norm that's given to me and the color map that's returned to me from the get with range function, which lives in the C tables dot registry. Remember you can tab complete here. It's a handy way to save yourself some typing. And I'm going to type get underscore and tab. You can see that there's all kinds of things in here. So I'm going to say get with range and then the color table name. If you go back and look at that chart in the documentation, you can see all of the available names. I'm going to use the National Weather Service reflectivity color table here. So NWS reflectivity. And then my lower bound is zero. And we know that the upper bound of the data, uh, it was 38. So I'm going to say 40 is the upper bound, give myself a little bit of room on the, the top end there. So that's going to create the norm in the color map object for me. Down here in I am show, I just need to tell it that my norm is norm and color map is CMAP. Now when I run that cell, we get something that is much more psychedelic, but is using the weather service reflectivity color table for that data. Again, we can run this with different color tables. So for example, let's say I want to use a, uh, a satellite water vapor color table here. And now you've got the satellite table. But I normally associate red with higher values. And here I know that in the center of the graph, we're at zero and the values get higher towards the edge. So this color table is actually backwards from how I would normally want to deal with it. Just like in matplotlib, any color table that's in metpy, you can reverse it by appending underscore R to the color table name. So if I have WVCIMSS underscore R and run it, you now see that it's more like I would expect. The color table has been reversed. My hotter colors are out towards the edges where I know my data values are higher. So underscore R is a handy way to remember to change color tables easily. So I hope you found this quick introduction to color tables useful and that you'll make use of some of the color maps that we have provided for you in MetPy. 
This is also an area where we would like some feedback. If you have colored maps that aren't in here that you would like to be able to use, let us know. You can always put it in as an issue on GitHub, and we're happy to work with you to do that. We can also show you in a future video how to convert Gympack color tables into something that MetPy can use. As always, feel free to get a hold of us. You can find us on Twitter. We're at MetPy. Don't forget to click subscribe to the YouTube channel so you get notifications when new MetPy Monday videos and other videos from Unidata come out. And you can always file an issue on the GitHub repository. All of these are linked down below in the video notes. Thank you for joining me, and we'll see you on the next MetPy Monday.